In this video, I've got 13 SEO tasks that you're gonna to wanna to ensure that you've done to your website to give it the best possible chance of ranking well on Google and the other search engines. Now these tasks are taken from a much longer SEO checklist that was kindly provided to me by Phil over at Spiderweb, who by the way offers some fantastic hosting. I'll leave a link in the description for you to go check him out. His checklist really is comprehensive, it covers basically everything that you need to check and you need to implement to ensure that your on-site SEO is as good as it possibly can be. Now Phil has kindly said that I can share his checklist with you guys. That's pretty cool, huh? If you wanna get yourself a copy, I'll put a link up now. Head over to wpeagle.com. It's a post all around this video. And on that post, you'll find a little form. Just pop your name and email address in there and I'll send you a copy straight away. So I think that's enough intro. Let's jump into it. Hello, it's Alex here from WP Eagle. Hope you're all well. If you're new here, why not subscribe? You can do so by clicking the button below. Make sure you click the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I try and upload every single week. So let's get started on these SEO tasks that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've implemented on your website. The first two are all around sitemaps. Basically, you need to have some sitemaps. You need to have an XML sitemap, and you also need to have a HTML sitemap. So an XML sitemap is basically a document that's very useful for search engines. It lists all the posts and pages and products, and maybe even your categories. Anything you want really that you've got on your site can be listed in this document, and then you can then submit that document over to the search engines like Google, so they've got a good understanding of the structure of your site and the content that you've got on your site. So when it comes to the XML sitemap, at the moment I've been using Yoast SEO plugin to create mine. It's really easy to do, just install the Yoast SEO plugin, which I'd recommend you do anyway, as it's really good for optimizing other areas of your site. And then go into the XML sitemap area and just make sure that it's switched on, and then you're pretty much good to go. I would recommend that you remove any elements that you don't want indexed by Google from that sitemap. If you've got lots of plugins installed, there can be lots of things that do appear in your sitemap. Generally, you just want your posts and your pages and your products if you're running an e-commerce site and your categories, probably. And yeah, you can adjust all this within the Yoast SEO settings. So make sure you've got a nice, neat and tidy XML sitemap that just shows the important things. The second type of sitemap that I mentioned is a HTML sitemap. And what I mean by that is just basically a sitemap page on your website that visitors can go and take a look at. And it's similar to the XML sitemap, it just basically lists all your posts and pages and categories and products uh, on a nice page so that uh, humans can have a look and again, see the structure of your site, the layout and the content that you've got. It's really easy to set up with a plugin. In fact, I did a video on how to create an HTML sitemap a few weeks ago. It could have been a few months ago whatever, I'll put a link up now and you'll also find a link in the description to that video. Go check it out if you're not sure how to create a HTML sitemap yourself. So tasks three and four, they're also related and they're all around the robots.txt file. This is a very important little file that you have on your website and it's one of the first things that the search engine spiders look at and it basically gives them some information about your site, what they can and can't index and it can also point them in the direction of your sitemap, you know, the thing we just created. Again, I would use the Yoast SEO plugin to create your robots.txt. It will do it for you and it also enables you to edit it. Once you've got your robots.txt created, task number four is to add a line to it that points to your XML sitemap. And that line is very simple. It's just the word sitemap, then a colon, and then the URL to your XML sitemap. So that's tasks three and four done. Create your robots.txt and then add a line to your robots.txt to your XML sitemap. Number five is a nice easy one. And that is to make sure that you've got a favicon set in your WordPress appearance settings. A favicon is just a small image that you upload to WordPress. You can do it within the appearance settings. And generally you'd use uh, your logo or a variation of your logo for the favicon. And once it's set, it's then used up in your visitor's browser tab. Take a look in some of your tabs up there. Now you'll see that there's a few favicons, just that small little image that appears next to the page title. 
Even more importantly though than browser tabs, the favicon is also starting to appear within the Google search results pages. So if you want your site to look really good within the search results pages, especially the mobile results pages, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that favicon is set. So yeah, task number five is set your favicon. Number six is to ensure that your website is redirecting to the correct version. What I mean by this is if you're running an SSL certificate and you've got one installed, which I strongly recommend that you do, you can get one for free from most hosting companies. Once you've got that certificate installed, it allows people to connect to your site over HTTPS, which I said is a really good thing because it makes people feel nice and safe. And Google really likes HTTPS sites. If you haven't got your site configured correctly for this, what can happen is that people can still access the HTTP version of your site now. Let me show you an example on the screen now. Here's Beer Shirts, which is one of my Amazon affiliate websites. And you can see that up in the browser bar, I can type in HTTP and without an S and access the site. And I can also access the site via HTTPS. So there's kind of two versions of the site there. There's the uh, HTTP version and then there's the HTTPS version. And this can cause a few problems, especially for Google because Google sees them kind of both as separate sites. So then you run into the problem of having duplicate content and yeah, it's just a bit of a nightmare. So you really only want the HTTPS site showing and if anyone tries to access the one without the S, they should get automatically redirected to the secure version. I found the easiest way to ensure that your site is redirecting correctly is to use a simple plugin. In fact, it's called the really simple SSL plugin. It's free, just install it, turn it on, and it will take care of all that stuff for you and make sure that people can only access the secure version of your site. One final point on that is make sure that you have your SSL certificate installed on your hosting before you install that plugin or you could break your site. So the next four tasks are all very similar and they're all about having some important pages created and published on your site. So let's go through them now. The first page that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got is an about us page or an about page, it can be called either. And that's basically just a page on your site that tells visitors all about the site, about the team behind it, about the authors and, and you know, any other interesting information about the company, about the website, you know, whatever. Just make sure that you've got an about us page because you know all proper, decent, reputable websites have an about us page and if you don't have one, then Google's gonna think you're not proper and decent and reputable. So yeah, get your about us page up. The next page you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got is a contact us page or a contact page. And this is just a simple page that allows people to get in touch with you. So it might just have a form on it or it could have more information like uh, an email address, a postal address, some phone numbers. Skype, uh, social media, whatever else you want to put on there, put it on there. Probably the more, the better. And again, it's just making your site look reputable and credible um, because you know all decent sites have a contact us page. And if you haven't got one, then that's a little bit suspicious. And you know Google's going to think that as well. So yeah, get your contact us page set up. The next page you need to have is a privacy policy or a privacy policy, however you like to say it. This is a page that explains, you know, how you use people's data, if you're using cookies and all that kind of legal stuff that, that no one ever reads, but you know, you've got to have it. Now, a little while back, I did a video on how you can use a third party service called IU Bender to create these pages. And if you use a service like that, you'll know that you're covered and that they're all legally compliant and all that kind of stuff. So I strongly recommend that you use them. I'll put a link to that video up now and also a link in the description. Uh, I suggest you use a service like that rather than just copying someone else's privacy policy, just in case you do ever have an issue, you wanna make sure that you're, you know, you're well covered. I found IUBender to be really good, it's really easy to set up. You just basically tick whatever you're using on your site, maybe using Google Analytics, maybe you've got a shopping cart, you know, whatever you're using, just tick it and it will create the document for you and you know, just make sure that you're all covered. The next document is another legal sort of document. It's the terms of service. So this basically just details all of the legal nitty gritty around your website. It might explain things like the copyright of your content, how your website works in terms of how it processes logins, that kind of thing. It might also explain your affiliate um, schemes that you're signed up to, all that kind of stuff. It's a bit of a legal minefield to be fair, so make sure you get advice on this. There are a few documents that you can just kind of buy off the shelf that should cover you for it. I'll put some links in the description um, where you can find those. 
But yeah, terms of service is an important page to have. If you're a traditional business, you may already have some legal terms and service and you could just kind of add them. That should be fine, but yeah. The next page you wanna make sure you've got is a terms of service. So they're the four pages you wanna make sure you've got. The about us, contact us, terms of service and privacy policy. We're nearly at the end of this video. I've got three more things to share with you. So let's move on to them now. The next one probably applies more to sites that are in Europe. And that is you want to make sure that you've got a GDPR pop up notification thing, you know, that annoying thing that Europe makers have. It basically just makes people aware of how you use cookies and all that kind of stuff. Again, I did a video a little while back on how you can add one of these using the service from IE Bender again. Really easy to do, just uh, install a little plugin and get it set up. And I like their one because it's not too intrusive. It disappears when people scroll and all that kind of thing, but it is 100% legally compliant with the GDPR laws that apply to all the countries within Europe. Last but not least, I've got two more things for you. And these are really important. And it's basically just making sure that your website works on all of the different devices that people use nowadays. So you wanna make sure that your site works well on a desktop computer, which I'm sure it probably does because you probably built it <laughs> on a computer and we're doing all the testing on your computer. But a lot of people then forget to check that the mobile version works okay. So fire up the website on your phone, have a good look around, make sure that it's all rendering properly and, and looking nice. Because if your site doesn't work well on mobiles or indeed tablets, Google is gonna penalize you for that. So um, make sure that your mobile version, the mobile version is probably the most important thing because you'll find that probably most of your traffic is coming from a mobile phone. And yeah, if it's not working for those people, that's a huge chunk of traffic that are just gonna bounce straight off your site and Google's not gonna like it and it's gonna penalize you in the search results pages. So that brings the end of this video. Let me just put up on the screen now, in summary, exactly what we've been through. So the first two are all around the sitemaps. You wanna make sure that you've got a XML sitemap and also a HTML sitemap. Points three and four were all around the robots file or the robots.txt file. Make sure that you've got a robots.txt file and then also make sure that you've got a link to your sitemap within your robots.txt. Point number five was to make sure that you've got a favicon set on your website. Number six was to ensure that it's only your HTTPS site that's showing on the internet and that your HTTP site, easy for me to say, is automatically redirecting through to the secure version. The next four were all around important pages that you need on your site. So make sure you've got an about page, a contact page, a terms of service page, and a privacy policy page. Next, if you're in Europe, make sure that you've got your GDPR cookie policy pop-up and that's all working nicely and clear and all that stuff so that people know that you're running cookies on your site. And then the final two were all around compatibility. Make sure that your site works well on both desktops and mobile devices. I hope you found this video useful. As I said at the beginning, these tips were taken from a much larger checklist which contains loads more stuff that you're gonna to wanna to check out. And you can get yourself a copy of that spreadsheet over on wpeagle.com. You'll find a link in the description. Might put one up there as well. Head over there, pop your name and email address in the form and I'll send you a copy straight away. Would love to know your SEO tips, thoughts and ideas. Do leave me a comment below. I do read all the comments I get and I try to reply to as many as I possibly can. If you're not already subscribed, you can do so by clicking on my face. Why not check out my vlog channel? I'll click on my other face. I actually put a video up on there yesterday. So yeah, do go check that out. And there are a couple of other videos. They've been chosen especially for you. So I hope you enjoy them. Until next time, bye for now.